Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. By the time this video comes out, it'll been about a month, maybe a little longer, since my second book, Paper Forest, came out. So I wanted to take some time just to reflect and discuss more about um, the publishing process, like being a self-published author in general, like what I was expecting from this book, plans for the future, just a few more little book things so I can wrap up this little book journey and series of videos nicely. Also, because when my first book came out, I think it came out before I started making videos, or at least videos on this channel. So I think I re-uploaded some of them onto this channel for my old one. So I didn't get to have this like full experience with my first book. So we're going to do it now. So let's begin. Oh, I also want to talk about all the versions of the book that are out, where you can buy them, and just costs. Because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about the money that goes into self-publishing but also profit, profits. People love talking about money and I'm an oversharer, so let's go. So like the first version, the main version of the book in my opinion is this one, which is sold on Amazon. It is, here it is, here it is, here it is. This one, how long is this one? This one, I think it's about 357 pages, I believe. This is 5.06 by 7.81 inches, which is um, based off this book. It is like, this is the standard UK book size, I believe. So if you want one that is closest to the rest of your books on your shelves, this is the one. And it's also the Amazon one, so it should be sold to my knowledge worldwide on Amazon. At one point, this would have been the book that was sold on a lot of websites. Like this would have come up on Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, like all your official booksellers because Amazon has an expanded distribution option so you can put your book out to places other than Amazon however because of this book it has a lot of black pages that makes it eligible for expanded distribution but it didn't tell me that until I went to look at like go through I was going through the different websites to find where the book is I was going through the ones that I know my first book's on so I could find where this one is but I was like hey my book's not showing up anywhere so I went back into the like pricing page on KDP and it said, oh yeah, you're eligible, but we're still going to make your book too expensive. Because this book right now, I believe is £8.99. But to put your book into expanded distribution, Amazon takes a bigger cut of profits. They take more of a distribution fee. So you have to make your book higher. You have to make it, I believe the minimum price is like £10.50 or something. So to sell a paper for £10.50, it feels a bit absurd. So that is just a big issue. It's not even with just KDP, it's with any website that offers expanded distribution is that they will take a bigger cut of royalty so you have to put your book price higher to make any money off of it. So if you see a bunch of like indie books or self-published books that are above what you would think a reasonable price for a paperback, that is why. It's because it's not even just Amazon, it's all the companies make you put your book higher and they take a big cut of profits, which is frustrating, but it's not something I have any idea how to go about like fixing right now. While we were talking about the book size ones, I wanted to show you the proof copy for this book versus the proof copy for my first book, which is up on the shelf and I'm not going to take down. <laughs> but this one, the proof copy is pretty much identical to the final version, except this one, if you open it, it goes straight into this page. But if you open the final copy, we go to like a black page first and then this page. That that makes sense, definitely. But other than that, the proof copy is pre is well, it is identical to the final copy. However, the proof copy for my first book is <laughs> it's it's not centered. Um there's no spine, again, not centered. There's no um, black pages. Well, the final one doesn't actually have black pages, it's more grey pages, but there's still pages separating each chapter. And also it's so thin. Because since the five years of publishing this book, I've learned how to make books. <laughs> Which is a very fun thing to see these side by side and realising that I have learned something over the years. I have improved. It doesn't feel like it sometimes, but I definitely have. Next we have the Amazon hardback. This is just um, the a hard version of the paperback. It doesn't have a dust jacket like a lot of hardbacks would. But this, I'm very weirdly in love with these books. 
because I think I like hardcover books but I'm not overly fond of dust jackets so I feel like they get in the way and I don't like taking them off to read because I hate the texture of the book underneath unless it's like a smooth shiny hardcover like these which is why these are so exciting but again this is the interior is almost exactly the same as the paperback it's just a different size this I think how big are you this I think is 5.5 by 8.5 inches which is what the other we'll get onto another hardback in a minute but that is just what I've gone for like the standard size of my books hardbacks it's the same for Beauty and the Breakdown they are just 5.5 by 8.5 inches but this one this is also like the Amazon exclusive but it should be available worldwide on Amazon that that might actually be a lie because um KDP, which is Amazon self-publishing company, has only recently introduced hardbacks in the past, let's say past two years. I only noticed it within the past one year. I think I did a video about that on this channel, but I do check my account obsessively pretty regularly. So there's more recent things. So these haven't fully been worked out worldwide. I know it's US, UK, like France, Italy, Germany, Spain, and maybe like two other countries, but they are, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. They should eventually be worldwide, specifically on Amazon. This is currently listed for, I believe, £15.99, which is pretty much the lowest I can set the price while still making profit. Because the thing about self-publishing, <laughs> is that um, you don't get the advance or like the lump sum of money that you would get if you do the traditional publishing route. So when they give you some money up front, they give you some money a little later on, they give you some money a little later on. And eventually if you sell enough books to like earn out that amount of money, you're still like, getting royalties. We don't get the advance, we just get the royalties, which is about 15%, I believe, of the book's cost. Amazon, if you look on the little pricing page, it says 60%, like the author gets 60%, but they also take the cost of printing the book out of that 60%. So you don't get 60% of royalties, you get around like 10 to 20, I think it's about 15%. But yes, these are the two Amazon copies of the book, the official, not the official ones, but the one that is official and currently exclusive to Amazon is the ebook. Because I wanted to enter the Kindle Storytellers competition. I think it's a UK based competition, but you can just submit any books released between like March and August or May and August of each year. And then the winner of this competition, picked by a group of judges, can win. I think it's like £20,000. And I thought, like, I know my odds aren't great because it is based off the quality of the book, the like, production of the book, but also ratings and reviews can be very important. And I know because I have no audience, that I'm not going to have the ratings and, ratings and reviews required to get the attention of the judges. But I do think, I have been scrolling through the tag recently, and I do think that this book, based off the appearance alone, we definitely do judge books by covers here. I think that it will base my cover alone. I, 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 I couldn't win this whole thing, but I would have a very good chance of having like a top, top something placement. But throughout the duration of this contest, you have to have your ebook enrolled in the KDP Select to so make it exclusive to Amazon for the duration. So at the moment, you can only get the ebook through Amazon, but I do have a pre order up so you can buy it from other places. I believe I have it set to come out on November 1st because the competition entries end end of August. And I was scrolling through like past like blog posts or announcements to try and work out when the competition ends. I think they announced the top 20 in like end of September, maybe early October and then end of October for one specific year of the competition is when they announced the winners. So to at least end of October, start of November, the ebook is Amazon exclusive and then it'll be out worldwide. Not worldwide, it'll be out on so many other websites. However, right now you can request for your libraries through Overdrive to buy the book when it comes out which is very exciting because I make money when people read my book from the libraries and there's so many books that I've got from the library app the I use the Libby app the website is like librariesunlimited.overdrive.com or something but there's so many random books that I have picked up from there that I wouldn't have seen otherwise so the thought of the library buying my book 
and then people can just stumble upon it. It's very exciting to me because I didn't have that going on my first book. So yes, yeah, so you can request your library to buy it now. You can pre-order the ebooks on other websites now. Link in description as always. But currently available to Amazon. That's all. The final thing about Amazon royalties is that I earn pretty much the same amount of money from any format you buy. I think someone's asked me before, like, how, like, what is the best version to buy to give you money? Any of them. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to reflect on finishing the book and publishing it. Then we'll move on to some other hardbacks, other paperbacks. There's two more things I'd like to tell you. But writing this book, I've been writing it, I say on and off since 2017. I found a very, very early version when the book was called Something Else Entirely, and I think it was a fan fiction for someone. That was maybe 2015, 2016. But I think I wrote a vast majority, maybe 80 to 90% of this book in 2017, when I was 16. And I was thinking, when I was doing the final edits of this book, I was just reflecting on who I was as a person back then when I was writing it, and how this book truly is a love letter to my 16-year-old self. And there's something about that. It's like, this, this book is my soul. This book is me. It is a time capsule. And it's a weird mosaic of everything I loved and was at that age. So something about finishing it feels like I finally closed the chapter on that part of my life which is who knows how I feel about that because I struggle identifying my emotions but it feels like you know I can finally move on from like all the bad things that happens that inspire me to write bad things in this book. Also one of the things that I was thinking about so much about publishing this book is that the character August's backstory is pretty much entirely based on one of my someone who's very special to me like one of my best friends we met because we had five seconds of summer fan accounts on instagram and we became friends and i started writing this book and they said hey put me in this book and i said sure because that was i didn't think i planned on publishing it back then i was just writing it and i was like hey give me character ideas and they said write me so this very special person to me became august and august's backstory is very accurate to this person's life and it's something i thought about after the i actually hit publish on the book and i was thinking oh people might pick because this is the character that people would have if anyone had issues with it it would be this character and august's backstory and i sat there like you know maybe this character isn't entirely sensitive to the things going on in his life there's some religious trauma and there's a mention of conversion therapy because this is it is my best friend's life so i think you know people might have issues with august's character and his backstory and that's the one thing that i decided i don't care about because this is accurate to someone who i love dearly and it's one thing that i think you know if you have your opinions and your sad reviews about this character that's for you this is for me <laughs> Okay, let's move on to another paperback. This here is the paperback that's published by a company called Lulu, which I love Lulu because they have expanded distribution and they have hardbacks with dust jackets, which is very fun, very exciting. The issue with Lulu is that they're kind of on the pricier side. The book, I hear a car outside. You set the one price for the book everywhere as you do for any company but if someone buys the book directly from Lulu's website I get like 50% of the profits if you buy it from any other place where they distribute from I get about 5p profits which is very f not funny but here we have the paperback this I believe is a5 it's like it's it's maybe five by eight inches it's, it might be a little bigger than that actually but this book is a5 because Lulu doesn't support the standard uk book size also the cover is a little lighter and a little more saturated why who knows honestly because the files are exactly the same but again exactly the same interior it's just a5 shape here you can see you can see the only issue i have with lulu specifically is that and let's find a good example here is that even though I uploaded the files so the black page filled the entire page there's like a white line at the bottom and I had this issue with Beauty and the Breakdown 
but there's a white line at, at the top. And I know it's not a me issue, because I made sure these files were perfect when I uploaded them. I think it's an issue that Lulu adds their own white border so they can do like trim the book to the right size and it's just not done accurately but I can't confirm that until I buy like so many copies of like this version of the book just to confirm that. I don't want to but it's just a very thin white line at the bottom and I think you know that's annoying but I think it's a them issue not a me issue so it's just I'm gonna have to deal with that and just see what happens. This book retails for, I believe, £12.99, because that, again, is the lowest I can set it to... The, just the lowest I can set it and make 5p profit. <laughs> Which is annoying, but who cares? That's life. I didn't publish this book to make money off it. I published it because there's a fly here. I published it because I've been writing it for the past five years and I wanted to move on with my life. And it was just actually done. Like I finished writing this book um, June 8th or something and I published it two weeks later just because I could. It's because as I was writing it, no not as I was writing it, as I was doing the final edits I was putting the, te the text from my Word document into the template so the book genuinely was ready to publish the second I finished writing because I was doing the interiors as I went. But yeah this book retails for 12 .99. this I believe I'm pretty sure it is available on expanded distribution so you can check the link in my description but it should you can just buy it from stores that aren't amazon basically a lot of like country specific stores as well later in the year i'm planning on publishing this book through another company called draft digital which recently released their like print book feature I've got one coming up for Beauty and the Breakdown soon because I also removed that from Amazon to Spanish distribution because it just wasn't worth it anymore. But the issue with that company is that they can't do black pages because ap apparently it shows through the page. Like, I've had no issue with this on Amazon and Lulu of like seeing the black page like come out like seeping through and ruining the text but this company says they can't do that so there'll be a version of this what size no clue a version of this coming out later in the year that just won't have black pages but will be available worldwide just a heads up i think the biggest thing for me that i noticed while doing the final edit of this book is the difference of my vision from my current self to my 16 year old self i wanted this book to um, be as close to my original vision as possible to truly be the story that i was trying to tell back then and just make it authentic to my 16 year old life and my original storyline and there's a very specific story that I want to tell with the characters and the story arcs and all that. So even though I was editing thinking that you know I could change so much stuff here I thought you know because otherwise I'm going to spend another five years writing it and I want it to be this very specific story and I wanted to stay that way. So as I was going through doing the final edits I just started taking notes of things that I would add hypothetically and then I realised that I had a list big enough that I could write a, that I planned on writing this book into a trilogy anyway. But I think the thing about self publishing is some people can't financially justify writing trilogies. Because if you make no money for the first book, why would you write a second book? But I don't care. And I live my life purely by vibes. So. My dog's angry. So I, I can't financially justify writing a trilogy, but I want to. Because I have so many ideas that while I was going through the final edits of the book of what I wanted the next book to be, I thought I have to do this. Because this is so good. This is so fun. This is so exciting. But I always want to be a completely different tone to the first book. Where, where has she gone? Where has she gone? Here she is. This book, I wanted it to be kind of like a beginner fantasy. I want to be very easy to read for people who are new to the genre, people getting into reading, all those things. Because they're things that a lot I've seen a lot of TikTok or booktop videos recently about like beginner fantasy. So I thought, hey, that's technically what I was doing when I started writing this. Because this was the first fantasy that I wrote 16 years, not 16 years ago, when I was 16. It's also the second book that I attempted writing. So I was new to this. I wanted it to be accessible to me, who, although I am a big reader and was a big reader I couldn't get into like high fantasy that easy so I wanted something simple something easy so I wrote one also the other thing about this being simple and easy 
is that the characters have come from their real world, their lives on Earth, and have just been dumped in this fantasy setting. So I wanted the reader to be equally as clueless about what's going on as the characters are, because that made sense to me. And also it's a first person narration, so why would the reader need to know more than what they know? And the characters are being like constantly lied to and misled and misinformed about what's going in the world. And it's a world that's powered by basically imagination and that can change at any moment. So why would there be specific rules that they catch on straight away? I want everyone to be dumb and clueless forever. And that was a fun thing to write about is that things can change. And when you're reading it, it might make no sense whatsoever about what's going on. But it made sense to me because I know I wrote it. I know that there is a very logical like magic system for this world. I just didn't explain it. <laughs> because the characters never encountered anyone who would explain it. So it didn't seem logical to like info dump all this stuff that's going on that they actually wouldn't know about. So I started thinking like what would I do for a sequel other than make the first book make sense because there's a lot of things that got mentioned and then I just moved on from. Some of those were because they just, I well when I put them into the book I thought they would become relevant to the plot and then they just simply didn't and then some of them were put in intentionally as like little teasers and foreshadowing of things to write about in the second book. Like I was dropping little easter eggs for myself of like I put this in here and then I can elaborate on it later on. That's what some of those things are. So there are things, one of the big things that gets mentioned, Carolina as a character is someone who gets mentioned and gets brought up in like two important moments but she is completely irrelevant to this storyline because she is something that I wanted to elaborate on in the second book and like the logic and laws of the world and the magic system and a lot of backstory for the crown specifically and the toy soldiers but this one is for beginners the second book is going to be more of a commitment to the fantasy genre and also I want to bring in more horror elements because I think that'll be fun because I've read some very good horrors recently and I think yeah that's so good that is so good you can still write YA books but they can be horror and more mature and have darker themes and that's something that I wanted to do for this upcoming book a commitment to horror I knew that at some point in life I wanted to write a paper forest sequel which I think would be called paper kingdoms or paper crowns I also want to write a short story or two short stories in this world one that's set directly after the events of Paper Forests and one that's like kind of a, pe a, pe a prequel short story. But I also wanted to write a Icarus retelling and I wanted it to be set in the lighthouse because I, I, I think lighthouses are so cool and I'm obsessed with them and I have no idea why. But the idea of writing Icarus in a lighthouse as like this tower structure made so much sense to me. But I had that vibe for the book, but I had no plot line. And for Paper Kingdoms, I had a plot line, but I had no vibes. So I think I'm mashing these two ideas together and oh, it's going to be so fun to write. Okay, now it is the fun version of the book. This is the Dust Jacket Hardback. This is how I, did I show you the back of these? Hold on, one sec, one sec. All these all these three books, it is just, they have the same front, they have the same, they got a quote and they have the little description, which I wrote and I was very proud of at the time. But this book here, we have the cover, we have my beloved Welcome to the Paper Forest, and then we have the quote, still the quote on the back, but in true dust jacket, dust jacket form, true, true to being just how dust jackets are done, we have, we have the quote in here, not the quote in here, we have the description in here and we have my face in the back. Okay again this version is published through Lulu and Lulu makes the book's prices very high due to expanded distribution. So to buy this beloved book it costs I believe £30.99p which is the lowest price I could make it and oh it haunts me every day. So if you buy this book directly from the Lulu website, I would make some, I think in like the six to 10 pounds region, I believe for this. 
but if you buy it from anywhere else where this book is listed i make 5p i know this because someone bought the dust jacket version of my first book beauty and the breakdown and i made 5p so and i was like Ugh. i mean thank you for buying my book obviously thank you i'm obsessed with you but it's just this person bought the most expensive version of the book and i made no money and that just haunts me as a self-published author also they spent over 30 pounds on a hardback this has very crisp edges the paperback does as well this one let's check the interior the interior doesn't seem to have weight oh no the interior here it has no issue with like a weird white line at the bottom of the black pages so i think it is just an issue with their paperbacks However, the other slight issue I have, I have, is that the, their fold lines, I think, are a little bit off. Like, this needs to be folded a little bit more that way so the cover doesn't wrap around to the front. And where is it? Where is it? It's here. So the spine doesn't wrap around to the front. So again, I think this is just an issue of they haven't folded the cover properly. It needs to move it a little bit to the left. But I'm just thinking... This, the actual quality of this book is very nice. It's just the little fine details that I have no control over aren't quite correct. And oh, I hate it because I can't do anything about it. And I'm a perfectionist. Obsessed with these hardbacks. Because when these come out, I feel like a true author. Even though I am a little goblin in the basement who can just print books at will. Also, I registered my fake publishing company. It's called Little Oaks Independent Publishing. Because that is just the street I lived on while I was making part of these books. And I registered it as an actual publishing company. Because on the government website, you can register a company for £12. I got the email this morning saying it's been accepted. <laughs> so Little Oaks Independent Publishing is no longer my fake publishing company. It's my real publishing company. Which is ridiculous. Publishing a book as a self-published author can be very underwhelming because first of all there's a whole thing of you don't get the same like treatment as a traditional publishing company would which is the lump sum of cash and they do the promo for you. So you publish a book and they're like oh I'm in negative money and I have no idea how to market it. The thing about my first book is that it came out while I was in my last year of secondary school. I was 15 about to turn 16 i think came out like the week or two weeks before my birthday and people were excited to buy it because i was young and all my t uh, not all my teachers a couple of my teachers supported me and bought the copy of my book my english teacher bought my book the some friends in my class bought my book i was also writing on novellas at the time and i had a bit of clout on that website i was vaguely famous on that website so then people who I just knew on the website bought my book and then my parents bought my book and my friends bought my book and the people that my parents work for bought my book and it was weird that all these random people were buying my book just to be supportive and also it was exciting because this child wrote a book this child published a book I think a lot of these people didn't realize it was self-published I liked personally I like to clarify that it's self-published not traditionally published it doesn't make me any less of an author because I have two books released in all formats but I like to clarify that it is self-published because I think a lot of people get in the head like oh I'm a rich famous author now but no I have no money and occasionally I tweet about my book and it gets two likes but I think it's just overwhelming it's just like yeah I published a book it's just a random Tuesday now I'm gonna go play Skyrim for six hours like nothing's nothing's happened and nothing feels like it's changed because I'm still poor and not famous I'm publishing this for my 16 year old self to have closure on my life and because I'm in love with this story and this story is a part of me. So I published this for me, not for anyone else. The next book that I'd like to release, it may be published for other people. And it's something that I, it's going to be another contemporary, it's a very important story to me and that's one that I would love to put effort in into people reading with this one not so much my plans for this book later in the year are as follows the ebooks will come out worldwide on november 1st 
they're available for pre-order now, links in the description. I also want to release, I, it's the Barnes & Noble version, because Barnes & Noble have their own like publishing, self-publishing company called B&M Press. The hardback would definitely be affordable. I think the hardbacks can sell for like $22, and I think the paperbacks are around $13, which is significantly less than um, the Lulu versions. So I can release the hardbacks through there. I like to release it with a slightly different cover. Well, it'll be the same colour, I think an inverted version almost, so it'll be dark text, a lighter blue background, just to have something slightly different. And if I do get my short stories done this year, I'll include them in those books as extra content, as well as like publishing them as like a free ebook. Just because I want to have like, a, I just want to have a special edition of my book. This Everything I do is for me and to entertain myself and keep myself happy, which is so much fun, but yeah. But until then, I have um, my, my stack of books, which I love more than anything in this world. And I am so obsessed with this cover. I I saw this cover, I was scrolling Etsy back in, I've had this cover for much the entire time I was writing this book. I think I got this cover in 2017 and I wrote a book in 2017. So I've been sat on this cover. I bought this cover, I believe for, hmm. I think I got this cover for somewhere in like the 50 to 70 pounds region, which is so incredibly dirt cheap for a book cover. Even for a pre-made book cover, that is disgustingly cheap. I know self-publishing has a reputation for being kind of expensive, but I did everything myself. So I spent, necessarily I spent £70 on the cover. And then, well, I actually, I made the book myself. I did the whole rest of the cover myself. I formatted the interior myself. I didn't have an editor, which I probably could have, but I did, I did many, many edits and I had some people proofreading for me. So I hope we've caught the bog, the typos. But self-publishing is not expensive if you do it yourself. But and then a lot of people don't have the time to do it themselves because they still have like jobs to do. Whereas I just sit at home and play Skyrim for six hours and just make books for fun. Because I love this and I'd love to build a portfolio in this so I can get good enough to do it for other people. Very time consuming, especially, especially the interiors. And there's a lot to learn about doing it. And again, you can see the difference between my first book proof copy and my second book proof copy is that I've learned a lot in five years. Anyway, back to this cover. I saw this cover when I was scrolling Etsy and I generally thought it was the most beautiful book cover I've ever seen. And looking at it now, I, I still believe it is the most beautiful book cover I've ever seen. I loved it so much that I bought it before I even had plans of publishing the book. And then the cover must have been a, a big reason for me to actually publish a book because yes, this needs to be in the world. People need to see this. That is some rambles. This wasn't an unboxing because I already unboxed them. This is a little show and tell of some insights into self-publishing, some little options you can publish your books, what I thought about this book and my plans for the future. I think I've covered all I wanted to say for this video. So thank you for watching this video. If you made it all this way, this is a long one, especially for this channel. I hope you enjoyed and I also hope to see you next time. Bye.